No sooner are we back from sun and fun in Florida than we're off to Germany at and Aero Friedrichshafen. Well, at least some of us. Aero is Europe's largest general aviation event and is the showcase for all things GA on the continent. This year is another record-setting event with more than 750 exhibitors from 40 countries. We have a small team there, led by AOPA pilot editor-at-large Tom Horn. Hey Tom, what's new at Aero this year? Hey Tom and Melissa, willkommen on Friedrichshafen, where electric is very much the buzz, although this year, compared to last, there were fewer actual electric aircraft on display. But German industrial giant Siemens had a massive display showing their full range of electric motors for aircraft and lighted panels of all the electric aircraft in development with Siemens motors, from Diamond's hybrid to Airbus's city bus. Siemens has bet big on electric flight. We have seen incredible progress. Uh, first of all, in the last 18 months, the electric vertical takeoff and landing projects came out of the stealth mode, many, many of them. It becomes the reality. It becomes clear that uh, the design space is opening widely due to the fact that with hybrid electric propulsion, we can separate the power generation from the thrust generation and thus being able to build completely new aircraft. So it's real and it is a vast progress. Siemens sees the future in hybrid technology. That is a combustion engine driving an electric generator to power the motor and recharge the batteries. And we are developing serial hybrid electric propulsion systems which keep the individual elements, the generator, the batteries, the power electronics apart, separate from each other. And if, which we do not see yet, but if somebody would invent a battery with, let's say, double the capacity, then with a serial hybrid system we could easily reduce the installed generating power and have more en energy stored in the battery. All electric aircraft are a niche market in Siemens opinion. But somebody who is very happy to play in that niche is George Bai. This is exciting for us all, I think. You know, the world's first certified flight training airplane. Uh, two year time frame, still on track. Just finished a meeting with uh, Siemens and just finished a meeting before that with Garmin two great strategic partners making this first electric, ruggedized flight training airplane real. The E-Flyer is on a two-year countdown to certification. Here at Aero, Bai announced they have sold 70 aircraft to two training companies in Norway. But we did see several new conventionally powered aircraft here, including Technam. This Italian company has a confusing array of models falling under a multitude of certifications. But now, they have a new one for the U.S. market. So this is an aircraft that we can put, you know, two people that like cheeseburgers like I do uh, from the U.S., we can put two of us in there, we can put four hours of fuel in this thing, and we're gonna burn four gallons an hour, and we're gonna be able to do full FR training and go into IMC. So I wanna stress, this is not an LSA. This is a standard category for the U.S. So it's the P2002 Mark II IFR. A nicely IFR-equipped P2002 Mark II will run you about $245,000. Across the aisle from Technam, Diamond Aircraft, back at Aero again. They missed it last year. The big news here is that the DA-50 is going to be powered by a Continental CD300 diesel engine. This engine develops 300 horsepower while sipping Jet A at nine gallons an hour. And the newly renamed Continental they're now called Continental Aerospace Technologies, is taking direct aim at Lycoming, selling the prime engine as a drop-in replacement. And Flight Design also has new aircraft. The new F-2 will be fully certificated in the U.S. Uh, it's a brand new design using a modular uh, airframe concept. We'll be making a 912IS powered light sport aircraft version a certified CS23 <laughs> certified version, uh, F2E Siemens electric power what's, what's version of the aircraft, thing? and uh, quite soon, and very uh, interestingly for AOPA owners, a four-seat version powered by the 915 IS. Those are Rotax engines, by the way. It's got a lot bigger cabin, G3X Touch Garmin avionics. It's got a single lever 
power control, pull it all the way back and you get brakes. It's got AmSafe airbags up here. It's got a uh, parachute. It's got inertia wheel seat harnesses. Uh, and the first deliveries are going to be in August of 2019 at Oshkosh. That's the LSA model. The Part 23 IFR certified F2 will come later in the year. About 220000 bucks. Both the new flight design and Technam models had their origins as light sport aircraft. But the rules here in Europe give them more latitude to be innovative and make some improvements. Warren Morningstar has taken a look at a few. Yeah, I sure do, Tom. Like this Mustang right behind me. Pretty cool, isn't it? You like sleek and retractable? Well, lots of models to choose from. All below the 600 kilogram weight limit. Now that's about 1,300 pounds, the LSA maximum weight in the US. Or maybe you're nostalgic for the Mooney Might. This SD1 Mini Sport might not be as slick, but it's an airplane you can wear. Speaking of what's old is new again, the flying wing is back. This Horton flying wing has actually flown with a Rotax engine, not yet certificated in any category, but it's part of Germany-based Lift Air, which also owns Flight Design and Rotorvox. Or maybe you'd like a replica of the Schrampi biplane. Rotax power, of course. But the replica of all replicas is this scale Mustang, available as an LSA or an experimental. Now the company will help you build it, and you have the option of installing a turbocharged Chevy V8. That's 600 horsepower. That's a screamer. But Sylvia Horn has her eye on something else. Sylvia? Well, Warren, in my mind, this is the best airplane of the show. It is not a restoration. It is a total reconstruction. Everything has been painstakingly hand-tooled, and therefore, it comes with a price tag of $2.5 million. This is the, the first all-metal commercial airplane in the world. And so we, we build it, uh, so it's, uh, it's like new. And uh, we really uh, like to fly uh, the F-13. It's, it's, it's a gorgeous uh, airplane. This air aircraft uh, aluminum is uh, it's not easy to work with. So we ha of course we had to, to relearn and it's a corrugated aluminum, it's, uh, it, it's not that easy at all. And it flies, and the best thing is, it has an open cockpit. You can feel the wind on your face, and this is what flying is all about, and I really want one. Tom, can I have one, please? I don't know, Sylvia, that'd take both the 401ks, the house, the cars, everything. I'm thinking this is more our speed. Besides, there's no price tag on it yet. Tom and Melissa, back to you. So it's always big news out of there. And Sylvia, I don't know whether you're going to get one <laughs> next year or not. You have to talk to Tom and, and really lean on him for that one, I think, with the open cockpit and all, maybe. but We'll lean on him, too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, you know, it's it, amazing. So there we are uh, in the same show talking about uh, eVTOLs and electric propulsion. At the same time, we're talking about, you know, a Yunkers recreation uh, of, of, a, of a really old airplane. And, and it's, that's what makes that show so much fun. Yes, anybody that's been there knows that it is. there's so much innovation right. and everything old is new again. Exactly.